Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another mobile gadget tech review. Today we're looking at the new Nikon D5200, arguably one of the best beginner cameras out there with some pro level features. As always, we'll give you everything you need to know, from the specs, to features, to price, and everything in between. This is mobile gadget, just tech all the time. I'm Jeremy, let's get started. The first and foremost thing to know about the Nikon D5200 is that it's a camera with the body of a consumer camera with some prosumer features inside. It's great for a first camera for a beginner photographer that has some knowledge of photography. It's also great for someone who's looking to get into the hobby but doesn't have any interest in purchasing another one shortly down the road. This camera has the features you need to get into photography for sure. In this video, I'm not going to go in depth with actually taking pictures on it. That video is coming soon. I'm also not going to go deep into specs and feature demonstrations and descriptions. In this video, I'm simply going to tell you my overall thoughts of the camera, as well as supply you aid on whether or not this camera is for you. I will get a few features out of the way first. That's including the flip-out screen exclusive to the D5200. That is one of the key differences between this DSLR and the Nikon D3200, a step down. The flip-out screen is great for doing video low or high up, especially on a tripod. And you can never forget selfies and vlogs. Seriously, this camera is great for that. Another plus is this mode dial on the camera that has an abundance of effects, filters, and modes. It's all easily selected with two fingers. There aren't any other really special features on this camera, but it's simply a great camera. The 24 megapixel sensor is always a plus, and the camera is relatively good in low light. The camera's standard kit lens is also not too shabby. It's an 18-55mm f3.5-5.6 vibration reduction. Great video quality as well, except remember, the DSLRs don't autofocus the video, so filming sports and things of that nature may be a challenge. Like I said, I'm not going to go over the image quality or the details of shooting with this camera in this video. It's just an overview of recommendation video. This camera is so light and has a very small footprint for such a big package. The only complaint I have is the grip on the side of this camera is very small, so even I with small hands can't comfortably fit my entire hand on the grip. My pinky and ring finger hang off. But that is a trade-off for having such a small footprint, however, which is really unbeatable. Now for the final piece and most important piece of the video. Who do I recommend this camera to? Basically, like I've said, this camera is a consumer-grade camera with some prosumer specifications, features, and images that match that of a much higher level DSLR. Photographers starting out that want to really get into it will have a lot of fun with this camera. Also, this is a great camera for budding videographers and YouTubers because of its flip screen for vlogs and HD video. If you're simply looking for a beginner camera or a family camera, the Little Brother D3000 series may better suit you. It's really up to you and what fits your needs. I personally encourage you to go check out a local camera store and compare in person. But all in all, the D5200 is really a great piece of equipment for beginners and budding pros alike. The price point is also pretty decent, starting at around $800 with the kit lens. If you're looking to go cheaper, the Nikon D3200 for $550 may be the way to go. It's up to you. So that brings it close to this week's video. Remember to subscribe, comment, and like to keep the HD videos coming. Stay tuned for more. This has been Jeremy Rochelle with Mobile Gadget. Just tech all the time. Here's some examples. There we go, and then there's a landscape. You can also click these two buttons here 